Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. I'd really love it. If you're returning, how you doing today? Well, before we get started, get your coffee, maybe some chocolate, because you just never know with me, <laughs> or Trish, or any of us, really. So, <laughs> this was brought to my attention by a subscriber, and I normally would never do a video about this, okay? But <laughs> I, when she says, hear me out, I'm like, okay, I will, you know, because this subscriber, I actually talk to her on the phone and, you know, quite often and, you know, text messages, stuff like that. And she's um, very intelligent. Okay. And we have, we have those good conversations, you know. And when she, so she started it out like this, okay? And I, listen, when I say I would never do a video like this, especially when it has to come to like a celebrity or anything, because honestly, I could give crap about celebrities and what they think, you know, and stuff like that, you know? But this literally grabbed my attention and I'm like, all right, I'll listen, you know? So she says, hear me out, because no matter what, this family has proclaimed Jesus Christ as their savior, so let's not judge for a minute. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll listen. You know, you know me. <laughs> I, listen, I gave myself to, to God a long time ago, you know what I mean? So she says, number one. Now, when I say this name, you're gonna be like, don't even go there, but I'm going there because she asked me to hear her out. So I'm going to ask you to hear her out as well. Okay. So just shush for a sec. Okay. She says, number one, Kim K mm, dresses like the Grim Reaper for the biggest fashion event of the year. Number two, her last few Instagram posts have a single knife as the caption. Number three, her most recent post says, the universe can give you every sign you need, but you see what you want to see when you're ready to see it. Number four, in her last season, she does an episode on Doomsday Bunkers and says she wants one. Number five, she recently applied for permits for an underground bunker on her own home last week. No one loves fashion and makeup more than this chick, yet she decides to cover herself in black, face included, like the spirit of death, for her favorite event of the year, which had American as the theme this year. She is afraid of spiders, yet has death symbols on her page this week. Files permits for an underground bunker and is telling people they can't see the signs. What is she trying to tell people? By the way, I always thought that Kanye running for president was their way of not being ostracized from everyone for supporting number 45 along with creating a scenario where they couldn't be forced to promote the liberal candidate. Pretty smart. And she put screenshots below. Okay, so. Here. Is the one picture of her. I'll hold it up. I don't know if you can really see that. That's her, okay. And then Kim Kardashian. I mean, that's like really out there, you know. And then here she is again. I mean, you know, who gives a crap about this woman? You know, seriously. I mean, but it's like, you know, 
and then she this okay and then she puts read down at the bottom and it says the universe can give you every sign you need but you see what you want to see when you're ready to see it and then Okay, so I just thought it was interesting and I'm like, I don't know how everybody's going to take this, but it's just kind of interesting to say the least. And then she also sends me this. So we've been talking, well, Trish really, she, she did a video on La, La Palma and the Canary Islands and I never said anything about it. You know, I never talked about it or anything like that. So... But the same subscriber, she sent me this. And she she's on Twitter all the time, okay? And she, she sent me these the, about the buoys, okay? And it says, Did you see the tweet about four of five our, of our tsunami detection buoys in the Atlantic are either offline and or malfunctioning? As of 824, uh, one as of 824, the others as of 913. If true, that's certainly an odd coincidence, which, yeah, I agree. And then the next one down says La Palma, breaking news. Four offshore buoys go offline to warn us of a tsunami. And the next one down says most tsunami warning buoys offline or malfunctioning in the Atlantic, Island, uh, Atlantic Ocean. So it is just kind of strange how those buoys go offline like they are with La Palma acting up and now all of a sudden those buoys are acting up the way that they are. Why is that happening? It just doesn't make sense. So I don't know, maybe, you know, use... You, you guys can talk about it, you know, you know, question it because I, I, I've questioned it myself. So why that is even happening, I, I don't, I don't really know, honestly. And then this was sent to me by another subscriber, okay? And this is talking about the container ships once again because this problem for some reason... <laughs> It's just not going anywhere. It really isn't. Um, for the past year, beachgoers off the coast of Southern California have been treated to an unusual sight. Doz dozens of hulking container ships moored offshore as they await entry into the port of Los Angeles and Long Beach, the busiest port complex in the United States. From the shore, the scene resembles a naval inf invasion. And the cause of the backup, say, port officials is strictly enforced uh, restrictions at the ports, right? Including those in Asia, as well as unprecedented demands for goods from China, South Korea, and other Asian uh, exporting countries. The top items on these backed up ships include furniture, auto parts, and textiles. Although there was a significant uptick in ships awaiting entry into the port, at the start of the pandemic in March of 2020, the backup accelerated significantly in the fall of 2020. When demand for goods exploded, filling up berths at the ports and requiring ships to anchor offshore, since then the situation has gotten even worse. And despite the port's best efforts to facilitate the offloading of ships, the current wait time for a ship to gain entry into one of the ports can be over eight days. And port officials say they've never seen things this bad. This has broken all records that we have in recorded history. And the implementation of the restrictions caused 
many of the problems at the ports. For example, officials noted that every shift change for port workers requires new protocols, including the cleaning of crane compartments, equipment, daily health screenings for staff, and other inefficiencies caused by social distancing measures. And the number of backed up ships has been unrelenting. As of September 15th, a record 88 ships were sitting on the horizon, forming a line of vessels stretching south over 40 miles from the entrance of the Port of Los Angeles all the way down to Dana Point. Now, prior to 2020, it was rare for a single ship to be held offshore. The good news is it tells you about the USA economy. The economy is very vibrant. When closures were in place, even I learned how to buy online. And that's what this guy is saying. According to Marine Exchange Statistics, cargo traffic at the port of Long Beach has broken monthly records in 12 of the last 13 months. Meanwhile, the port of Los Angeles has eclipsed eight months eight monthly records and had its two highest performing courts, quarters in the port's 114 year history. We're working as if it's a triage situation. So many ships are awaiting entry into the ports that all of the contingency anchorages are set up along the coast are filled. Many ships have been ordered to drift along the coast, something that has never happened before. The scarcity of anchorages is due to the fact that the coast extends southward towards Dana Point. The shelf drops off quickly into waters over 250 feet and we're having the ships drift because we've run out of water that is shallow enough for the ships to physically anchor. Our database never anticipated drifting so you don't have a column for that. So every day you have to do it by hand for the reports. Port statistics show that the surge started in September of 2020 when the port saw 57 extra container ships above normal. They've hunkered down, you know, because of the Rona starting in, in March. They didn't go to Disneyland. They didn't go to restaurants. And when fall came, they started buying stuff. And that is what started the import demand and the backup in the fall of 2020. Other non-Rona issue port officials point to is ship size. According to this, this uh, guy, he's one of the head guys, okay? 15 years ago, ships were maybe 13 containers wide. And now they routinely span a width of in the high teens or low 20s, resulting in many more containers per ship. Consequently, it takes more trucks, more longshoremen, and more time to move cargo. The impacts of the backup have already been felt across the global supply chain, with long waits, higher costs for certain products. Even companies like Starbucks are warning customers at their stores that certain ingredients might not be available. Some worry that things will get worse as we move into holiday season, traditionally the port's busiest time of the year. The congestion has also contributed to a global shortage of shipping containers, causing ocean freight costs to spiral upward. Toy makers, for example, have had to outbid and outmaneuver competitors for shipping space to get their goods from overseas factories, mostly from China, 
in order to reach U.S. consumers in time for the holidays. And the backup is doing more than just causing headaches because of the weight. They're also likely to increase the cost of the toys themselves. There is going to be a major shortage of toy pr products this year. The demand is going to be there. What is not going to be there is the products to fill the demand. So toy makers say they are being charged up to five times the normal amount for 40 foot containers to get their goods to the U.S. The added cost will almost certainly be passed directly onto the customer assuming they can even get to the toys that they're looking for. Shoppers over the years have been conditioned to wait for last minute sales and deals, but they probably won't be coming. In fact, inventory may be so low, so if there's a must have items on your child's wish list, we're encouraging families to shop early for toys to ensure that you'll be able to deliver on those coveted gifts. An analysis by the Russell Group, a risk modeling company, suggested that the amount of trade held up so far this year and moving into October could total $90 billion. The impacts are being felt nationally, but also locally by Californians who make recreational use of the state's coastal waters. Greg Bauman, he's a research editor and recreational fisherman from Playa del Rey, who fishes regularly off the coast, says that the presence of so many ships can be intimidating from the vantage point of his 29-foot craft. It's kind of awe-inspiring because you're confronted by the sheer size of these things, he said, and they look like floating cities. It makes you realize the sheer volume of goods that we consume that come across these things. Yeah. You know, it, it just makes you wonder. Because remember, how, lo how long ago was it? Not, I don't think, I don't even think it was six months ago when I did a video on my second channel about no, sorry, my first channel about the uh, <clears throat> the containers that were falling off over the side and landing at the bottom of the ocean. <clears throat> and I made kind of like a joke about it saying, oh, well, that's where all the, the lazy boy recliners and stuff like that, like all of your orders, your online orders that you've been waiting months and months and months for, they're at the bottom of the ocean. And they actually went down with like, you know, people went down there and there was literally hundreds of these containers at the bottom of the ocean. And they're full of stuff. Nothing you could do about it now. But still, you know, I mean, that's, you know, because they were not putting the containers on the ships in the correct way. And uh, I think it was a storm that came through and the containers just literally just went over. Because they weren't being stacked properly or something like that so but this this is never going to end this uh, container problem it's not going to end but anyways guys all right that's all for this video i love you i'll see you in the next one you stay safe you stay positive you keep prepping and as always fearless. less